for uh, and for all the attendees that are just joining in we have oksana with us thank you so much for joining us oksana <laughs> thank you so much for having me those of you who have just joined in uh, oksana is a biotechnology scientist biohacker and a futurist uh, she founded a canadian biohacker in toronto's first and largest biohacking meetup group with the mission of bringing health optimization and anti aging science to the mainstream uh, oksana we're really looking forward to the presentation oh thanks so much for having me i'm so excited to be giving this talk and we're live right i can start yes yes <laughs> okay. Awesome. So hello, everyone. Welcome to Biohacking for Longevity uh, and the top anti-aging tech for 2021. Uh, my name is Oksana, also known as Canadian Biohacker, and my academic background is in genetics and biotechnology and big data analytics. So I have a long-standing interest and passion for the applications of technology and improving and optimizing human health and performance. So the question that I'd like to pose to all of you is, do you know how well you're aging? And in this presentation, I'll be giving you some practical tips and the tech you can use to start to answer this question. So let's start from the beginning and define what biohacking is. So the popular definition for biohacking is that it's the art and science of modifying your internal and external environments to harness and optimize your biology. So in short, biohacking is health optimization. And a lot of people ask me, you know, why do you biohack? And there may be different reasons why people may be interested in biohacking depending on their personal health and performance goals. My goal is to live healthier for longer and reverse the aging process. And since you are attending this conference, you may share a similar interest and goal. Um, so the way that I like to think about biohacking is that you're really setting yourself up for longevity success by slowing down the accumulation of damage. As we know, aging is the accumulation of damage. So the reason for biohacking for me is to proactively set myself up and as you can set yourself up for longevity success um, by um, proactively preventing that damage from accumulating because it's a lot easier to prevent it than to try to reverse damage that's already occurred. Um, and I really love this statement, the absence of disease doesn't indicate optimal health. So your body is actually very resilient and adaptive and you can survive for a very long time under various stressors and suboptimal conditions. And so just because there's an absence of disease doesn't mean that you're actually performing at your optimal best physically and mentally. And data shows that early biomarkers may predict the onset of disease for up to 10 years before it actually manifests itself as pathology. So in other words, um, aging takes time and developing diseases takes time. And if you can catch those early biomarkers, you may be able to actively slow down the progression and to change the course of the outcome. But unless you measure it, you really have no way of catching those early signals or indicators that things are starting to shift away from that optimal state. And so, if you're asking yourself, you know, well, how do I know how I'm aging? Um, there was a great paper published earlier this year that um, defines that humans aged according to four main ageotypes. And uh, so any given person can age according to one or up to four of these aging pathways. So someone may exhibit incredible immunity all throughout their whole entire life, but their kidney function starts failing early. Or another person may actually be aging according to all four of these aging uh, ageotypes. So we now have the technology to actually profile um, how we're aging. And so we're living in an exciting time where tech is really catching up to our goals. And this is something that I hear often is um, that, you know, genetics, um, really account for how we're aging and it turns out that really genetics influences only about 54 percent of biological aging um, the other half is influenced 
by environmental factors and that includes lifestyle and disease and medical history so medical history is things like you know have you been in a car accident or um, taking a big fall you know something that happens throughout the course of your life um, so genetics is only half of the puzzle and your genetic blueprint you know isn't gonna um, dictate how you're going to age there are many different ways to um, alter the course of the aging process that you can action and so when I talk about what I do to address aging in my own personal practice, I consider these three pillars. So there's the ultimate goal of longevity. Um, and then there are the day-to-day -day biohacks and interventions that you may be experimenting with, but you really need to start with a baseline measure and understanding of the state of your health in order to start to track the impact of those biohacks. Um, and ultimately the impact on how well you're aging, how they're affecting your longevity. So you need the ongoing biometric data and this is where biotechnology really comes in. So <laughs> leave me with this point before we jump into all the tech is what gets measured gets managed at the end of the day. Um, this is where the self quantification comes in and really gives you the data so that you can benchmark your health and performance measure the impact of the interventions and lifestyle changes that you're doing and that you're applying and really take that personalized approach to slowing down aging according to the way that your body functions. So for example, if you wanted to, you could order what I like to call a personal aging report card. And you can do this, you know, as frequently as you like. Um, we now have the technology to um, measure your biological age. This is one example. So this is my report from earlier this year. Um, I took the my DNA test, which showed that my biological age was 24 years old and that I was younger than 90% of the people of my chronological age. Um, so this is all great, but there is that remaining 10%, which means that there may be room for improvement. So how may I or anyone else go about affecting this or impacting this? And this is where that day-to-day -day biohacking and tracking really starts to come in. So if you're asking yourself, you know, what are the different areas that I should be tracking and measuring? Um, I like to see it as five main areas um, that I and, you know, someone that is interested in longevity and biohacking may be interested in tracking. So there are five inputs to consider how you're sleeping, how you're taking care of your fitness, what you're eating, how you're managing stress and your exposure to environmental factors. So, there are a lot of things you can quantify. There are many tech products to help you start painting a better picture of how your body is functioning. Um, but let's start with step one being your biological age. So you saw in the previous slide, um, this is a test that I've already done myself. So this was um, the epigenetics test with my DNA. Um, the way that it works, essentially epigenetics are like little tags on your DNA that signal which genes should be turned on and off in your body. And this is an important mechanism because when we're children, we need certain genes activated and then suppressed when we reach adulthood. So looking at epigenetics is a good way to see how you're aging at a biological level. Um, another test to consider is glycan age. So this is a science-based test that determines your biological age by looking at the state of your immune system and inflammation in your body. So it does this by looking at something called glycans, which regulate our immune system. And it's been found that changes in glycan structures um, on IgG molecules or your immune molecules occur 10 years before the onset of first symptoms of the disease. And so these are great biomarkers for that early detection of risk factors for development of disease. Okay, and then the last test here is telomeres. So um, testing your telomeres. Um, the test is called life length. There are other telomere tests out there. Um, out of all the telomere tests, this is probably my favorite one. Um, although I haven't tested my own telomeres. 
Um, <laughs> this is the test that I would probably go with um, if I were to do so. So telomeres are caps on your DNA that become shorter and frayed as we age. So this test aims to track how well you're aging based on the length of your telomeres. Okay. So three different ways to test your biological age. Um, next is the state of your physiology or your you know, overall fitness and how your body is doing. So there are many different um, tests that you can take. I've kind of grouped them into four main categories. The first one being, again, going back to genetics. So there are you know, over 400 genetic tests on the market today. This is just an example of one that I've personally done uh, from DNA company. Um, it's a genomics test that they have. Um, the second category would be um, doing your regular blood panels. So you know your blood biomarkers and checking um, what they're telling you, if there are any gaps in your health that you should pay attention to. So um, a great one is from um, is Genova Diagnostics blood biomarker tests from Nutrival. And then the third category is testing your hormones, your state of your hormonal health. Um, a great test in that category is the Dutch hormone test. I've personally done this test um, a few times. Um, and the last category is the state of your gut health. So again, there are different gut microbiome tests on the market today. Um, the GI map microbiome test um, is one that I prefer personally. Next category, we're moving fast here. There's a lot of tech to discuss. Uh, the next one is body composition. So Body composition is important because simply looking at your weight doesn't actually tell you much about what's going on in your body. Um, so someone may appear thin, but actually have suboptimal body fat percentage. Um, so, you know, if they're not maintaining their lean muscle mass, for example, so these devices help you track this. Um, again, there are different devices on the market. I personally have the Renfo Smart Scale at home that you know you, I can use daily. Um, it comes with an app that it connects to, so you can track your metrics over time. Um, there is also the DEXA scan, um, which is considered sort of the golden standard, um, but that does require you to go, you know, to a clinic that has these DEXA scans or devices and get that done. Um, that said, I have gone for a DEXA scan and the metrics that I saw on my Renfo smart scale at home were very comparable. So I consider the Renfo smart scale to be fairly accurate. Um, and then the DEXA scan can be something, you know, that you do less frequently for that highly accurate check-in. And then the last one here is a FIT3D scan. So this um, FIT3D body scan is also a great way to test your body composition, um, similarly to a DEXA scan. But again, you need to go to a facility that has this device. Um, and the Fit 3D body scan also provides some additional metrics around your um, posture and body alignment. So um, it just gives you additional metrics to track. Okay. Next is going into activity, sleep, and other biometrics. So again, there are so many devices on the market. Um, these are some of my favorites. Um, I personally do have the Aura Ring. I've had it for years. Um, they've upgraded their app several times. Great fitness tracker, um, also measures your HRV, um, but I consider this a quite an accurate way to track your sleep metrics as well. Um, I also do have the Garmin watch myself. Um, it has additional metrics. I would say that the Aura Ring is more accurate in terms of sleep tracking, but the Garmin watch um, and the associated app gives you some additional metrics as well. Um, and then the Biostrap also is another wrist-based wearable that can give you a lot of um, daily biometrics that you can be tracking over time. Okay, so VO2 max is another biometric to pay attention to in terms of aging. So this is a metric used to measure your cardiovascular fitness and the measure or your VO2 max score increases as your level of fitness improves. So on the right hand side, you see this is a screenshot from my Garmin watch app. So this is my VO2 max score. 
um, which apparently means that my fitness age is at 20 years old, which is the top 20% for my age and gender. Um, pretty good, but again, room for improvement, and this is a great way to track that. On the left, left hand side, you see Live O2, which is a device to help improve your VO2 max. And there are a lot of natural ways to improve your VO2 max. High intensity interval training is great for that. Um, Live O2 is a variant of high intensity interval training um, where you're also wearing this oxygen device that. Um, increases blood flow and oxygen concentration to the brain um, and just facilitates healing overall by super saturating all body tissues, plasma, and lymph with very high levels of oxygen, okay? Next, getting into glucose and ketone tracking. So this is another great metric to track for anti-aging purposes. Um, and that's glucose metabolism and insulin sensitivity, which typically get less efficient as we age. So you want to be quantifying how effectively your body can metabolize sugars, deal with stress, um, your body's ability to keep blood sugar levels stable throughout the day. And, um, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see what causes your blood sugar levels to spike. Um, so whether that's, you know, eating pizza or if you're having to wait in line for the grocery store and your stress levels goes up, um, it's interesting to start to track, you know, what affects your blood sugar levels and how you can better manage that. So there are many devices that can help you do this. Um, continuous glucose monitors are becoming more popular in biohacking and, you know, health optimization as a whole. So no longer, you know, you don't need to have diabetes to <laughs> track your glucose on an ongoing basis. Um, some of these devices are available over the counter. Um, here in Canada, you know, I can go to the pharmacy and pick up a Freestyle Libre device, which is a con continuous glucose monitor here on the left. Um, and it's a sensor that tracks for two weeks and then you have to replace it. So Freestyle Libra is a continuous glucose monitor option. Another option is the Dexcom G6, also continuous glucose monitor. Um, there are also some manual uh, devices available to help you do this. So Keto Mojo is another device that I have at home. Um, it's a manual device, so it does require you to prick your finger, draw blood, and test at specific points in time. Uh, Keto Mojo tracks your glucose as well as ketones, so they offer both glucose and ketone testing strips, which is great. Um, say if you're doing the ketogenic diet, for example, um, or you just want to know your ketone levels. Another device, if we're talking about ketones, is um, the Keto Breath Sensor. Um, it also has an app. So again, it's very convenient. You don't have to prick your finger. You can just have the sensor on the go and breathe into it to check your levels. Jumping into brain health, another great area to track for anti-aging purposes. Um, so there are a few devices on the market and neurotech is a huge ever expanding field. Um, lots of devices coming out in this area. These are a couple that can help to quantify and affect your brain performance. So brain gauge is a great way to learn what negatively affects your brain health and the state of your brain health. So there are a few metrics that they track as you can see. Play-Doh Work is another device that I have at home. So it's um, a new device on the market that uses transcranial direct current stimulation, delivering uh, low level electrical currents to stimulate specific areas of your brain in order to enhance different functions of the brain. So they have different areas that they focus on. Um, they look to enhance creativity and generate new ideas, help you focus and limit distractions, um, learn and boost memory and help you solve problems as well. So interesting device in neurotech. And getting into stress resilience, this has been definitely a hot topic, especially this year in 2020 and looking into 2021, stress resilience is gonna continue to become an important topic and something to manage. So there have been an increasing number of devices looking to improve stress resilience. Um, these are four of you know, devices that I chose to focus on here. So Happy is a new product that lets you choose your mental state. Um, this product generates six different mental states, um, whether there's 
happy, alert, focus, relax, calm, and sleepiness. And it does this by delivering um, precise low level electromagnetic signals. Um, and it comes with a companion app as well. So, um, you know, you can choose how you feel on the go, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, next is Sensate. So this device um, taps into the nervous system um, to help you relax in the moment and just improve your stress resilience over time. Um, Muse is another great wearable. They just came out with their second generation of the Muse headband. So this is their brain sensing device. So now as in addition to helping you with meditation, this product um, is also looking to promote um, better sleep habits. So this device now includes a heart rate sensor um, and an accelerator meter and a, a gyroscope to monitor body movement and breath. Um, in addition to your brain, and it helps you quantify your progress over time, which is great. And last but not least, there's Apollo Neuro. Um, again, a new device on the market this year. It's a new wearable that improves your resilience to stress. So this device works by um, delivering a touch therapy felt as um, gentle waves of vibrations and this stimulates your parasympathetic nervous response and looks to restore the overall balance in your body. So again, when used consistently, um, this device is meant to retrain your nervous system to manage stress more effectively on your own. Okay, and last category, last but not least, still important, your environment. So your environment, of course, affects your health and the rate at which you're aging. Um, so a few interesting devices to help you track your um, environment. So on the left, you have an air pollution sensor from Plume Labs um, to, you know, you can have this on the go with you, with you anywhere and track the quality of the air around you. Um, there's also um, an EMF meter from Trifield to, you know, measure the electromagnetic frequency pollution around you as well. Um, so you can kind of stay away from high EMF areas um, that can affect the state of your health potentially. And then last but not least is D-Minder. So this is an app that you can download um, and this helps you track the UV and vitamin D levels. Um, so UV levels in your area where you are and can also tell you um, which times of the day, um, you know, to go outside to get your vitamin D, um, and then uh, which times when the UV rates are perhaps higher than optimal, um, that maybe you don't want to be spending as much time outside. So great app for that. And then lastly, you know, why are we tracking all of this? So this is just an example of what you can do with um, starting to measure um, and quantify your activities. So the idea is to benchmark um, and then track and optimize. So this is an example of my deep sleep. Um, over a course of a year where I've managed to boost my deep sleep scores 50% year over year. Um, and, you know, I just put on the timeline different things that have happened. Um, and it's interesting, you know, I experimented with um, doing a keto diet as well as three day fasts, which really helps to boost my deep sleep. Um, and, you know, you can see where other um, factors in your environment or your activities can um, perhaps, you know, set you back a little bit. Like, for example, taking, you know, a number of transatlantic flights um, or getting sick, um, you know, they can, again, lower the state of your health. Um, but when you're tracking your metrics over time, you can also see how well your body responds and recovers from these events, right? So this is just an example of how you can use your data using some of these devices to start to better understand the state of your health and start tracking the impact of the interventions or biohacks that you're implementing into your day-to-day -day life to start to improve your metrics over time. Okay, and that is it for today's presentation. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much. Um, 
you can all reach out to me on Canadian Biohacker on my social media channels. I'm always sharing out my new learnings, products that I'm trying out. So feel free to reach out to me there. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, Oksana. It was a great presentation. Thank uh, you. It was a lot of fun. Have... <laughs> We have a lot of questions coming in for you. A lot of them are about the products that you that you talked about, uh, but uh, we don't have a lot of time on our hands, so I'll just pick up as many as I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I was trying to speak quickly. There was a lot to get through, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go through a couple of questions, maybe. Uh, right. Sana, uh, what we can do is later on, if you're up for it, uh, sometime later, we can have an Instagram live session wherein we can have all these questions answered. Okay. If you're in yeah, for it. I can definitely set something up, yeah, in the coming week or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because this, to do that. Seen with all the, uh, all the speakers, there's so many questions coming in. So we really like to do live sessions with all the speakers so they can have all their questions. So the attendees can have all the questions answered. Okay. All right. Without wasting any more time, I'll just pick up as many <laughs> questions as I can. Uh, we have a question from one attendee. Could technology help humans live forever? Live forever. Oh my goodness. Um, you know what? I would love for that to happen. Um, I think realistically, we are still about, you know, 10 years away from seeing truly viable therapeutics come on market to affect um, the aging process to slow down aging and potentially even reverse aging. There's so much exciting longevity science research happening right now in this space. I think it's going to be a combination of therapeutics as well as technology to achieve that goal ultimately. All right. Okay. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, uh, okay. This is funny. Any tips for looking younger apart from makeup? <laughs> Looking younger, well, hey, you look beauties in the eye of the beholder, right? <laughs> um, I mean, part of it is, you know, your mental state. If you feel younger, you'll look younger and act younger. <laughs> but uh, I mean, your the what your health is on the inside shows up on the outside. Um, so for me, again, I think we talked about this at an earlier panel today, it really starts from the basics, how you're sleeping, how you're moving, how you're eating and your mental health, um, getting those basics right before you start, you know, taking supplements or putting on creams or using devices, um, you really need to focus on those basic, basic foundational health pillars. Um, and that's going to, you know, really set the course. Um, down the line to help you look younger and feel younger as well. Right. All right. Uh, Sana, we seem to be running out of time. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Thank you for answering questions for our attendees. And I'm really looking forward to live, more live sessions with you where you can answer more questions. That, you Thank know. you so much for having me. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to uh, doing some lives and answering some of these questions. This is my favorite topic. So uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day, Oksana. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.